All right, this is the video on the scan tool that I found. It is the Car Reader Elite V2.0 by Launch. And I'm not getting paid to do this review. I just wanted to put this information out there because I didn't know this scan tool existed. And when I found it, I expected absolutely nothing from it. And it surprised me because it, it actually does more than the one did that was $1,200 plus. Dollars. So I wanted to share this with everyone at least for these trucks, I know for sure what it can do and I'm gonna show you so that that information's out there because this was just under $200 and for what it can do, it was absolutely worth it. All right, now that we've got it hooked up, let's go through some of the functions step by step and I'll show you what it can do, at least for my truck. Let's go to Dodge 2004 truck. I don't know what the Sprinter software thing is about, but then you can go to special function right out of the gate and it'll give you these options right here. You get to this page and then you click on system selection and then you can access all your different modules through here. Now some of these modules when you click on them they won't work because they aren't options in this truck but that's okay. You're going to go right up here to ABS. Now the ABS you have special function and then you can do these two things. Bleed brakes, that's for if you're um, replacing brake parts and you need to mess with the fluid. But set pinion factor is going to be where you change tire stuff. Now, when you get into here, you have kilometers and miles. You're going to pick miles because we're in the U.S. unless you're not. And then that light will come on, but don't worry about it. It will go away. Now, I have my tires set at 555 revolutions per mile and my axle at 11.5. None of that's right. I just programmed around it, but it all works. You have three different things you can do. You can select uh, stock tire sizes, and that will give you everything that's meant to fit the 17-inch rims, and now the 20-inch rims have two options down here. So you can pick any of these, and it will program it for you. So if I wanted to pick this... You can pick your axle size, let's just say 9.25, and then you can say OK. And then it'll blink, and that will go off just like that. It'll say successfully programmed. Now, I'm going to set mine differently because mine works when I set it differently. But then we'll go back to OK. Mile. Now, this isn't what I actually have, so we're going to go... Instead of selecting from a t list of tires, I'm going to go to enter a tire count value. We're going to go to 10.5, and then we're going to enter 555. So, 
And then, ooh, how do we get out of here? Did I just hit enter? Nope. Oh, yeah, the globe. And then you hit, no, go away. Okay. Just gotta try and do this. So this can be a little frustrating. Got it. <laughs> and then, okay. And now this is going to pop up again, and then it will go away on its own. So, that's how we do it. That would be how you would change your tire size. You can change that however much you want and, and just play around with it. And you will know if it's off because your speedometer will will not read properly if it's off. If, it, if it's not set properly. And then... So to write your VIN to the PCM, you can just click on the PCM module. And this one will take a little bit longer to load for some reason, but it'll get there. Then you'll hit special function. This one right here. Okay. Okay. It'll show you your current VIN. Okay. Okay. And then yes to write a new VIN. Then you can do a few other things as well. Now back in here to change your fuel tank capacity, you go down here to the overhead console, special function, program fuel tank size. Okay. Okay. Now before I select this, I'll show you what it looks like right now. Right now, I have just over half a tank of gas, and my distance till empty is 193. Now, if we go and select 20 gallons, just to show you the difference, okay, now we're at 150. So, going back, if I take this back down to 34 gallons, or rather up to, okay, it'll program that in, and now we're back to 193. So that's how you do fuel tank capacity. You can also do things like turn off the seatbelt alarm by going to the instrument cluster. And from there, again, special function. And then you have many, many options that you can play around with, one of them being the seatbelt reminder. So right now I have it disabled. You can hit OK, and I can go to Enable. And then to verify that, we can go back to it. Now it's enabled. So now if I go drive around, my seatbelt alarm will come back on. I don't like it on, so I'm going to hit disable. Now we'll be back to disabled. There are other things that you can play around with, like the headlamp delay timer. It should give you a couple options. And Let's go into your transmission control module. Like the PCM, this one will also take a minute to get into. Special function, quick learn, overhaul to replace, battery disconnect, different things that you can do. And then you can also read fault codes. The big deal is that you can go into every individual module and read fault codes pretty easily. There shouldn't be any in mine as of now. No DTCs. But if they were there, they'd pop up right there and tell you what they are. So again, very helpful tool to have. 
You can also do an actuation test. So you can check the solenoid movement. I'm not gonna mess with any of that, but these are things that you are able to do in terms of diagnosing a problem you may have. So to conclude, I hope that that helped everyone out. You can certainly get one of these for a fairly low price and then go through some more of the functions and test it out and let me know. Uh, the only things that I wanted to note real quick is that it is an Android operating system. It's not perfect. There is, a, you know, there's some glitches that you'll have to deal with and it will ask you to connect Wi-Fi the first time you use it. So I've always just connected it with my phone, but after that, it doesn't ask again. So it's not connected right now. Um, other than that, yeah, you can't really hurt anything programming with this. Um, anything that you might mess up on, it's going to tell you in there somewhere. And then you can fix it and it should be as simple as that. Just make sure you pay attention and you read the prompts so you know exactly what it's going to do. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Bye.